mind about Russia. He said what a terrible thing it was that Russia, likely with Vladimir Putin's say-so, poisoned a Putin opponent, his daughter, a police officer, and others with a highly toxic weapon of mass destruction on the soil of a NATO member country, which also happens to be this country's oldest and closest ally. He said Russia needs to be held accountable and promised action to do it. The only problem was he wasn't speaking to Vladimir Putin on the phone. He was talking to the president of France. That's right. He really gave the president of France a piece of his mind today. Yesterday, this is what he said about his call with Putin. I had a uh, call with President Putin and congratulated him on the victory, his electoral victory. He congratulated him, which, according to The Washington Post, as you probably know by now, his briefers in capital letters warned him not to do. He failed to mention the whole poisoning on the soil of a NATO ally thing, which the same briefers urged him to do, again, according to The Washington Post. Now, there's no law that says the president has to take their advice. He is the president. He gets the final say. What he does not get, however, is a pass. Keeping him honest, the president is a grown-up, making grown-up decisions, perhaps about the fate of all of us, and those decisions deserve scrutiny. And it would be insulting to treat him otherwise, especially when his decisions on Russia have serious people raising serious questions. I think he's afraid of the president of Russia. Why? Um, well, I think one can speculate as to why, uh, that the Russians may have something on him personally, uh, that they could always roll out and make his life more difficult. The Russians, I think, have had long experience with, with Mr. Trump and uh, may have things that uh, they could uh, expose. Something feel. personal, perhaps? Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. That's John Brennan, former CIA director. He's by and large an Obama appointee who recently lashed out on Twitter at the president over the firing of deputy FBI director Andrew McCabe. In a moment, though, we'll be joined by someone who has served Democrats and Republicans alike, former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, who also has questions. The president, who calls General Clapper a hack, by the way, is on the defensive, tweeting this afternoon, quote, I called President Putin of Russia to congratulate him on his election victory. In past, Obama called him also. The fake news media is crazed because they want me to excoriate him. They are wrong. Getting along with Russia and others is a good thing, not a bad thing. The president went on to say, they can help solve problems with North Korea, Syria, Ukraine, ISIS, Iran, and even the coming arms race. Bush tried to get along, but didn't have the smarts. Obama and Clinton tried, but didn't have the energy or chemistry. Remember reset? Peace through strength. But remember back on the campaign trail back then, the president claimed that strength starts with naming your adversary. At least he said that when it was radical Islam and he was attacking President Obama. To solve a problem, you have to be able to state what the problem is or at least say the name. We have a president that refuses to use the term. Another event happens. I keep saying, I wonder if he's going to say it this time. And he doesn't say it. He won't say it. He won't say it. He doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to mention the term. He doesn't want to use the term. We have a leader that doesn't even want to discuss the name of the problem. And you can't solve a problem if you refuse to talk about what the problem is. Anyone who will not name our enemy is not fit to lead our country. Naming your enemy. But when it comes to Putin, not so much. In fact, it does seem like this president has always gone out of his way even to say nice things about Putin. I spoke indirectly and directly with President Putin, who could not have been nicer. He is really very much of a leader. He said nice things about me. I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. If he says great things about me, I'm going to say great things about him. It'd be nice if we got along. If we don't, we don't. But it would be nice. He could not have been nicer. He was so nice. If Putin likes Donald Trump, guess what, folks? That's called an asset, not a liability. I hope we have a fantastic relationship. I don't love, I don't hate. We'll see how it works. We'll see. I like him because he called me a genius. Putin did call me a genius, and he said, I'm the future of the Republican Party. So he's off to a good start. It's the president on Vladimir Putin, some of which he said after he became president, meaning after he was briefed on the extent of Russian interference in the election. But perhaps his reluctance to speak ill of Putin is just a function of his natural reticence, his reserve, a certain inability to speak ill of anyone. And yes, I'm kidding. Crooked Hillary Clinton. Little Marco. Lion Ted Cruz, Lion Ted. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. Well, Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. I mean, both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. He's a war Five hero. Five and a half years. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, OK? I hate to tell you. Rocket Man should have been handled a long time ago. Jeb Bush is a low energy person. For him, to get things done is hard. 
Maxine Waters, a very low IQ individual. We have a representative in Congress who they say was here a long time ago. They call her Pocahontas. Well, Vladimir Putin gets no nickname, even though, as you know, those clips barely scratch the surface of all the people that President or candidate Trump has slammed over the years, nor all the disparaging Twitter nicknames and nasty adjectives he's thrown around during executive time. There are some of them, just a partial list. Again, nothing for Putin, not bad Vlad or poisoning Putin or Botox Boris. In fact, according to our friends on The Lead with Jake Tapper, the president has written more negative tweets about the cast of the musical Hamilton than he has about Vladimir Putin. Yet so far, the president has responded to Russia in a way he responds to no one else. And it's not like his top advisors aren't speaking out. Some of them are. The United States believes that Russia is responsible for the attack on two people in the United Kingdom using a military-grade nerve agent. Russia has often employed malicious tactics against the U.S. and Europe to drive us apart. And serially harassing and intimidating diplomats are not the behaviors of a responsible nation. I'm surprised there are any Russian cyber experts available <laughs> based on how active uh, most of them have been against and undermining our, dem our democracies in the West. Well, now those Russia critics, Secretary of Tillers, State Tillerson, of course, is gone a day after criticizing Russia for the last time. The president, of course, is also.